Welcome to MRE Uncut, where we'll give you real and practical insights into the real estate scene in Melbourne. We'll discuss what's happening in the industry, all backed by MRE's history of over 30 years in the game. With that said, let's jump into this week's episode of MRE Uncut. Welcome to an MRE podcast. Today, there's myself, Stephen Fitzsimon, Pete Hoymans and Jared O'Donnell uh, joining you to have a quick chat about the rental crisis that we're facing at the moment, um, the causes, what we're seeing, and and hopefully a couple of ideas or, or suggestions as to where we think it should be. I don't, I don't think it's going to be that quick, is it? No. Well, we're supposed to do this in 20 minutes, so we'll yeah. have a crack at it. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. It's not going to be 20 minutes. Let's let's well, let's get started, though. Mm, I'll go first. I yeah. mean, we were just talking. Nice. With, Jared just mentioned a one-bedroom in Richmond um, that was, what, 525 a week? 550 a week. 550 a week. One bed, one bath, one, one car bed, in one Richmond, bath. a very stock standard apartment. How's, how big, roughly? Oh, would have been 50. 50 square metres, yeah. so tiny. And yeah. how many people through that? Oh, it was a lovely Saturday, nice and hot. Yeah, okay. And I reckon I would have walked 25 groups through pe- people through 25. on a Saturday. It, oh, it wasn't even a good time. It was oh. 3.50 in the afternoon. Wow. And, yeah, people people came. Fundamentally, he's still underpriced then. Yes, um, which is crazy to think about, right? Five fifty a week for, for just a very stock standard one one one. And ha- how many of those people do you reckon applied? Oh, we, we would have got at least half, ten plus. Ten applications for one apartment. Yep. And what and what would that apartment rent for? Say, I don't know, two years ago. Oh, two years ago, coming out of COVID, we we would have been talking four seventy fives. Yeah, wow. if not less. Wow. Yeah. And pre-COVID, I'd suggest that we would have appraised them when they were, you know, in in that normal environment, four thirty a week, something like that. So, yeah. so we've got one bedroom apartments going for extraordinary prices, huge, six hundred bucks. Never seen before. And if they're furnished, from what you tell me, they're seven hundred, eight hundred. Yeah. Or what, like, well, the jump's gotten bigger. Like we used to say to clients. Furnished apartments, you're looking at fifty to a hundred dollars a week more. Fifty for one beds, a hundred for two beds. That's doubled, if not more. So yeah, you, yeah. if you've got a furnished, uh, you know, one of these fifty square meter apartments, yeah. You, if it was five seventy five, you're probably looking at seven hundred if it's furnished. So, so can I just can I like go on a bit of a rant? Is that all right? No, for because I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm gonna, not going to be the I, only. One. I'm going to do that anyway. And. So we've got this scenario where these small apartments are worth these extraordinary prices. Why is that? Um, and of the 4,000 that we manage, Steve-O, we've got, let's call it, 20 or 30 or 40 landlords every month saying, we don't want to do this anymore. It's a bit too hard, so we're going to sell, of which we're selling most. But something that I, I recall recently, we went to the realestate.com function, which was a room of 100 agents what great fun that was. Right. But we did get around the room, right? Yeah, and, all the and major clients. Everyone we spoke to had a rent roll of 500 or 800 or 1,200. All and pretty, bigger, yeah. Yeah, and, and in a couple of cases, 5,000, so mm. big rent rolls. And um, consistently every principal I spoke to said, we're selling 20 a month, we're selling 30 a month. So I was thinking about that, uh, you know, a couple of days later. If you, 100 agents... Times thirty a month. That's three thousand properties a month. That's thirty six thousand properties a year coming out of the rental pool. Yeah, just from that room. So what? So what is it? What is it Melbourne wide? And what is it Victoria wide? Is it is it Melbourne wide as a rough guess? Is it eighty thousand landlords selling it per annum at the moment? Whatever it is, it's terrific. But it's huge. Yeah, it's astronomical. So, so if you're a government. Charged with the, um, charged with the responsibility of making um, housing, rental homes, you know, um, consistent and well priced and more available. Could the current government have stuffed it up any bigger? I don't think so. I think they've done a fantastic job at they've stuffing done it, it up. Un- haven't they? Yeah, yeah. So we've got, we've got. So I'm not. I don't, I'll just. I'll. I'll. Let, I'll have my rant and then you can jump in. So we've got the new fantastic 130-point legislation checklist that 
in some cases, if you're an old home in the eastern suburbs, let's say, you got to spend twenty five thousand dollars to bring it up to standard so that it complies. So yep. they're just going too hard, going to sell. Sell. Then we've got on top of that um, gas uh, compliance connections on top of the electricity, which our mates at Detector Inspector do, and their businesses uh, grown twenty fold in three or four years because of that legislation. I understand the safety factors around that. Fair enough, but the landlord has to pay. Was ninety nine bucks. Now it's. 650. 650 bucks, right? So that's on the landlord. Combined with rates going from 2% to 6%. Yep. Or, or more. Land tax. Thank you. What's the land tax roughly? 2%. Of the value of the property? Land. The value of the land. Yeah, depending on the so circumstances. So like gives us now, so on some of the houses that we rent, what would that, because I'm, Trying to think what that would be. Well, the biggest pain points for your internationals. Your internationals are now paying 4% of the land value per annum. Right. So if you've got a house and land in Point Cook yep. and the land's worth 500 and the house is worth 250, you're paying 20 grand a year just to hold it, just in land tax before you pay for anything else. So come to Australia and buy a house and land package, Mr. Overseas Investor, and we'll slug you 20 grand a year just to hold it. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to get 35 rent. Yeah, you more well, maybe less, and, mate. But you've got to pay thirty in interest as well. Oh, of course. So, so there's all those factors, um, and then so we're losing seventy five, eighty. I'm mean, put a circle around a hundred thousand properties a year coming out of the rental pool. Correct. Um, you know, we've got lots of mates of developers we've worked for over the years, and we've you know sold towers and rented towers. They've out of the market. And they're not so selling sides, to investors. So they don't stack because the building costs are too high. Yep. Um, or, or for whatever reason. So we've got a trickle of supply coming on. Tiny. So if the one better that Jared spoke about is it was 400, then it was 500. Now it's 600 with 10 applications. If I, if I asked you to um, go forward in 12 months or 18 months, what do you think that's going to be? There's, I mean, I know it's a bit of a, a yeah. bit of a, a, bit of a, bit of guesswork, but it's not going to be less, is it? No. And the reality is, I think for the first time in years, share houses are going to be back, and back with a vengeance. Oh, great! People are not going to be able to afford to live on their own, as the cost of one-bedroom apartments in Richmond gets to these astronomical levels. So we've got pain. So we've got pain. You know, not for for ten for you know for people seeking a place to rent. The pain is extraordinary for our landlords who are trying to build an investment portfolio. And we've been doing this, selling rental properties to investors for twenty five years. Their lives, you know, and and some of them got five and four and six and eight. You know, we've got some people that are school to just normal average jobs when they've worked really 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 hard to build a property portfolio, and they're now saying, you know what, this is too hard. Yep. So I think personally that um, if a one better today is 600, this time next year it could, it could be 700, it could be 725. Yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's even 750, I don't know, but, but the way that the stock's drying up, that is kind of what I'm thinking. There seems to be always somebody looking for it and that's the, that's the shocking thing. If you've got 25 people turning up at four o'clock in the afternoon on summer's day, which is not your prime time. How hot was that day? Was, it like, oh, was, that, it was, was that like the 35 degrees? Yeah, it was steamy. It yeah. was steamy. It yeah. was, I was not in a jacket. The jacket was long gone. Okay. Um, you never wear a jacket anyway. Oh, I, I, I scrub up all right. Okay. okay. All right. I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll, let, you, I'll let you off on a 35 um, degree. Yeah, no, it was, it was a hot day. Um, and, yeah, people weren't going to stop. Uh, and, I mean, we've already seen that growth in 12 months, right? Like mm. uh, our, our letting performance, we, we lease a lot of properties. And we've seen from December to December, that's six and a half, seven percent that we've gone up just there. And it feels like things are going to get a lot worse than six and a half, well, seven percent so this time next year. So we're just talking about one apartment. So for anyone listening or watching, we've got a little channel on our Teams thing that tracks results, tracks our rental results. And I, this is just, this is live really. This, this is today's, this is 9 45 this morning. So, um, so a smallish apartment, two bed, two bath, 
in the city is nine fifty a week. Um, before that, we've got one in Ivanhoe that is one hundred and fifty dollars a week more than the previous rental. That Myrtle. Uh, that is. Um, or at Wesley. That's right. the one, Wesley Avenue. So he knows the stock. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got uh, Flinders Street, one hundred and fifty bucks more. Ross Street in Northcote. I mean, that's um, that's a massive one. That's worth talking about. It's it's a very stock standard two bedroom unit. Yeah, I, I an older block, seventies. Yeah, seventies block. You know, the, you know the you can picture it the, the yeah. lounge rooms where you walk in and you've got the the brick wall in the lounge room because uh, that's that's what gorgeous. number one's got. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's six hundred a week in Northcote. Yes, yeah. and it's tiny two two one one. Yeah, and then we've got um we've got here Bavaria. By the way, this is all just today. Yeah, this is not like. This is to just today. Uh, Bavari Street, Carlton. Um, Two hundred thirty <laughs> pronunciation, but we'll, we'll run well, with uh, it. Well, Two hundred thirty-five. But you having to go up my English? Yeah. Two hundred thirty-five bucks a week more than the previous rental. Yeah. Uh, Victoria Street, Carlton, fifty bucks a week more. So, I mean, I could go down this list all day long. That's what's happening, though. And so, um, the apartments are getting any nicer as time goes on as well. You know, another one. Getting older. Street, getting older. Plus There's no new stock. stock. Yeah, so this, so this is I look at this every day and just think, what's the you know where is this going? Well, I think it's it's worthwhile looking back at where it's come from. So I went to a seminar a few weeks ago, and they were talking about you know the origins of the crisis, and and it was funny because they pointed out all the different steps, and we sort of forget about them over time. They were talking about when they increased the stamp duty for foreign purchases to three percent. Yep. Yeah, then then they talked about how the big four banks ceased lending to international buyers. Then they increased the stamp duty liability of foreign purchases to 7%. Then they had limitations on interest only loans for investors. So Remember sorry, that what, came in? what was this timeline? Did you say oh, that? this is this is like over the the past 7 or so years. Yeah, right. Okay. Um of, of government and then you've got tightening of the restrictions on interest only lending, then you've got the introduction of the annual vacancy fee for foreign investors, then you've got limitations to the number of foreign investors in new developments. So they've just continually... What, do, what is that What is that percentage? Well, they, they, they changed it to 50%. You couldn't do more than 50% yeah, yeah. At, at that point. Yeah, 50% FIRB rule. Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, then they um, tightened the depreciation deductions for investors. Remember when... Um, BMT went up in arms because if you purchased a renovated property, you couldn't claim the renovations. Um, yeah, you had to capitalise it. Yeah, you yeah. had to do so, the so renovations instead of claiming yourself. it over five years, you had to claim it over 40 years. Great. And then Fantastic. Um, they, they removed the stamp duty concessions for off-the-plan investments. Yeah, well, that was, that was to everybody. To everybody, yeah. Then they... Um, Increase the capital requirements um, for Tier 1 lenders. Then they tighten the home loan application criteria after the Royal Commission. Then they had the um, the FIRB fee increase on the purchase of residential property and now the cost of debt skyrocketed. Oh, is that all? So, you know, you sit there and you look at that in a timeline and you're thinking, well, no wonder they're, they're, they're having difficulty getting developers to build buildings, yeah. whereas they were coming out and adding to the supply. The supply market has dried up enormously. Yeah. Like who's building buildings at the moment? The only ones that I know are build to rent operators. So 217, two, like 212 two to two, let's say 218, we had 20, 25, 30,000 a year coming on, something like that. I'd say more. And we, we would get our chunk of Correct. share of that, which is how we grow the rent roll, et cetera. But um, and now there's like minimal groups and minimal, drabs. yeah, tiny. And and if it, all this is done, you know, it's turning off the mum and dad investors, but it's turning off the international investors, and the only investors that are actually attracted to this are, are the big institutional built to rent ones. But even then, they're building stocks slowly, so it's all just coming out of the ground. It's not completed, and at the same time as all those issues that are facing the mum and dad investors, like now that you can have a dog in in their apartment yeah. in the city, 
Like who well, that's, to... that's causing a few landlords to oh, also sell. Selling out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want a dog in my I mean, apartment I in had, my house. Do you yeah. remember I had a couple of rental properties out in the suburbs yeah. with dogs? Yeah. Oh, now I don't mind dogs. I've got a dog. But do you remember that? Like the dogs, that huge dog, it yeah. just destroyed the destroyed. place. The garden dug out, screen doors gone, yeah. just front door scratched to pieces, po- polished floor decimated. We are oh, in I, I hope that. Astronomical. Yeah. Like the, the classic big I still Doberman don't mind in, in a, in a, a big Doberman in a 50 square metre apartment. Yeah, I, so that, I think that rule. But you uh, can't say no to it. No, I know. You, you can't say no. You can't say no to it. So, so okay. They're all the reasons why rents will keep going. I mean, if you go to, have you had a look at Sydney? Yeah, in terms of the rents, mm. it's astronomical. So you think Melbourne's bad? Sydney is at another level. Yeah, Gold Coast, I've heard, is like two, two bed, uh, two bath in Sydney in a really good spot. Although Sydney's a bit different because you've got beaches and things and harbour. But it's, you know, let's say it's 90 square metres. They're two grand a week. Just to nail that. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking Melbourne looks really cheap compared to Sydney. And and I think maybe the next two years are we heading that way? It, because because we've got also well, you know the other one I use as a bit of an example was the um, the two bed we had with no car park in Lennox Street Hawthorne. We won't say the name of the owner or the building, hmm. but um, and it was nine hundred bucks a week, and I, I was kind of shaking my head at you, going, "Not a chance in hell it won't happen." But we got skilled migration who worked at Epworth Hospital. 100 metres away, who rented it happily, no car. Doesn't need one. Doesn't need a car. I think 900 bucks, it's, you know, it's good for our landlord, but that's what we're competing with. Or that's yeah. what the tenants are competing with is, is skilled migration as well. Yeah. So that is also another interesting trend Yeah. on top of everything else. Well, the, the migration levels are... Enormous, their record levels of migration. So we, we're seeing, you know, Jared. I'm sure you can tell us better. But it, when we go out and see the inspections at the moment, there's a whole lot of Irish. Oh yeah, take a trip down St Kilda, right? It's, oh, it's, it's, it's Irish? Irish. Irish. Irish corridor. Really? Yeah. What are they doing? They are all come out here on visas. Yeah. yeah, and to they get out of Yeah, yeah. Don't drink with them. No, no, no. no. Cool. Don't drink with the Irish. No, yeah. it was again. It was incredible. We. Um, that's <laughs> true. They'll hurt you every time. Oh, yeah. no, I'm Sorry, not going to start a fight. Irish. I can't win. That's Yeah, yeah, yeah it's no. like taking a knife to a gunfight, <laughs> drinking pots with a nourishment. No, yeah. it, was, it was funny. Um, mm. One of our BDMs, they, they listed one in St Kilda, St Kilda Reese, and it was a beautiful three-bedroom apartment, yep. ground floor, old build. Yeah, um, and I I was there on a Saturday as I as I would be, mm. and I reckon, I reckon I had the the checklist. Ja- was, jacket or no jacket? Uh, no, there was a jacket this day. Oh, well, there was, was a jacket cool this day. day. Righto. Yeah, it was all right. Mm. Um, about uh, below twenty, so okay. Yeah, uh, and I was, uh, I was like Irish, Irish, yeah. Irish. Um, well, yeah. so it's like fresh off the boat type uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like just, and, and the British on a visa or yeah, a, a lot of them have done their three months. Yeah, of their. their Working holiday visa, they've done their regional work and yeah. they're, they're here to stay for the remainder of their term. Which that's is before we even talk about students, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's student season. It and is. We're in the middle of the peak You want to be any, anywhere around Uni Melbourne at the moment, Oof. RMIT, run the other way. <laughs> yeah. And and I think it's only going to take off because we've got Chinese New Year coming up and then as soon as that takes that place, they, they'll all arrive from, from overseas and then they'll be here and they'll want a place before uni starts. So it's 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 definitely happening, and they've got we've got a false economy going there because the money's coming out of China. Um, it's not mums and dads funding it or kids working at the pub on the weekends funding. Sorry, their, what do you what do you mean by that? Well, the money's coming out of Australia's economy. It's it's coming into the economy from another economy. So with, with the the local people so you're, can't you're compete saying, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, so they they're forced out of those sections. So we've got. So that's all the rental demand side. Mm. Then we've got pressure on the supply side because mm. everybody's giving up and the government has made it so hard for the investors and developers to produce more stock. And so, you know, unless unless we see changes to the supply side well, which and encouragement. Which really slow burn. Oh, which, which will take forever. But they need to start and they haven't started. And how else do you encourage investors, local investors, to return to 
so putting their that money was actually property. my next question or yeah. query. Yeah. I would have thought, like, you look at some of these rents now, right, on a one-bedroom apartment, 600 bucks a week, but they sell for, let's say, what would we sell that for, maybe 500,000 or five, yeah, 470. 470, 500. Yeah. That's starting to look okay. Better. You know, as an investment, if you want to be a property investor, it's not. It's almost, you know, got a deposit. It's, I think apartments so, are going to take off. I, I, I think they will. The capital growth? Yes. Yeah. But because the to, new apartments have grown replace, for Replacement cost is years. going to be much more. Correct. But um, are we, like to my knowledge, I don't think we're seeing investors coming back in yet. No. They're just, they're still on the fence. There's a, there's a few mm. around, but they're, they're not hot at all. And so, why would they be if they can invest in other, um, through other methods and receive similar um, returns with, yeah. Uh, because we haven't seen that capital growth start yet. It's only just, you know, it's a forecast and, and we're selling that stock easier than we have for the last 15 years. Yeah, yeah. But the until we actually start seeing that growth, why would they come into there when you can invest in other things and get without all the hassle and get similar return? Another stat that we pulled out of our business the other day that's also a little bit of a worry Um because I thought, you know, the, the end of last year or even halfway through, right, we're selling heaps of, a lot, lot of landlords jumping out. Okay, if, I, I get it because, I mean, even I was thinking myself, oh, maybe, you know, it's, it's a bit hard, so much paperwork and all those things. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe it'll come off. But yet in January, did did I read a stat in January that we, we actually did the most, we listed the most um, properties off our rent roll ever? Yeah. For sale, mm. yes, yeah. So it's getting worse. Yes, but from a from an exit point. Yes, of view. more vendors are selling. Yeah, and and they've gone through so much pain because they haven't seen capital growth. Now they've got interest rates which make them negatively geared, mm. and they they're still not seeing significant capital growth. So w- what's the point of having something that's negatively geared that isn't growing ca- in capital value? So can, another question: the challenge. While we've got. Quite a lot of investors who might have bought, uh, you know, stock not that wouldn't have been some past stock from us, but let's say whatever, and they're taking the opportunity to jump out because the market for that's pretty hot because a lot of first home buyers are coming in. You and your BDM team are still listing forty to fifty a month. Yeah. New business. Yeah. So they're all investors, obviously. Yes. What are they? What's their? Where's their head at? What are they saying? Well, they're struggling. Yeah. And they're trying to maximise the rent that they're getting on their properties, but mm-hmm. they're either getting poor service or they're getting poor results. Right. And both of that, a big chunk of that, is actually due to the changes that the government made in 2021 mm-hmm. where they've piled on about another 30% on top of the standard workload for a property manager through their legislative changes, yet they've failed to educate the owners about the additional work that they've piled onto the property managers. And so the property managers have just gone, you know what, I'm out. Yep. So we've had this, this chaotic three years where property managers have had a massive churn, good property managers have been lost to other industries, yep. and they're struggling to rehire and train the next generation of property managers. And if you're not a destination workplace, well, then you're really going to struggle in in being able to continue to deliver excellent service for your clients. So the clients are dissatisfied, so they move. So if you were, uh, who's our current premier? <laughs> I I know our prime minister is. I don't like him much. Mm. Little weasel. Yeah. Well, that that answers the question. Though. Yeah. I think it's Jacinda Allen, right? No, yeah. well, I'm yeah. not just okay. going crazy, right? No, no. Jacinda Allen. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. I mean, cool. if you were Jacinda, what would you do? Like, oh, do, like, right. what's it? You gonna help the help the poor people trying to rent I'm, a home? I'm sure. I'm sure the two of you, like, in 30 some, seconds, what would you do? Well, the two of you got some great right ideas. I'm, I'm sure. But like, isn't the solution just staring us right in the face? And it's it's more stock and how we generate more stock. I don't understand why people are out there feeling disincentivized to go out there and build new properties. And that would that would be one. I, I mean, I, I think personally, like, what more stock is just such a slow burn. Having worked on so many projects over two decades, like, you know, you 
you go and apply for the permit, you massage the plans, you get interior design. It takes three to four to five years to get that from paper to, to people moving in. I think it's an unwinding of, of, a, of a ton of those, that list of things you read out, like unwinding heaps of it, particularly the foreign investor stamp duty thing, um, stamp duty off the plan. Uh, uh, you know, I won't re-list no, the items. No, I'm not going to go more. Unwinding a, a big chunk of that. But you can turn some of that stuff back on pretty quickly. But the reality is if the money's coming from another economy into our economy, that's a that's a benefit to our economy. Um, so we, we want to get um, international buyers back into the market. Um, they can be restricted in terms of the the volume and the cost. But if I, if I look at the stamp duty just as the one thing, why do we put the stamp duty up? It's basically to get more revenue from them investing in Australia. What's it caused? Well, now we're not competitive with other international locations for them to put their yeah. money. So they chose to buy in London or Canada or On Thailand. a positive though, maybe we end on this positive because I, I think I'm look as a property investor, I just got a a nice rental increase. Yeah. You can start an, seeing if you're, if, you're, growth. if you're a landlord at the moment, if you're not with us, maybe have a chat with us. But always a salesman. Hey? Well, it's, well, it's true. But the next year or two, you're going to get fantastic rental growth. Yes, and I think like, 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 like nothing we've ever seen yeah. in the last uh, ever, yeah, forever, our lifetimes. Well, forty mm. years I've been doing it nearly. So, so if we were, you're going to get one or two hundred dollars a week rental increase in the next. 18 months to 24 months and rates will probably get a Come cut, down. I reckon, let's call it late this year, even, you know, and maybe maybe a half percent within 18 months. I think you're, you're back in the game as a landlord. Yeah. I think you're looking pretty good, especially if you've got multiple properties. Apartment, you know, if you're in the apartment market, you're going to have price growth through the reasons we mentioned. So unfortunately for those that are renting, pain. For those that are holding the property, just hang in there. Yeah, I think hang in there is, a, is mm. a, if if you can hang in there because I, I think you're going to start to see capital growth yeah. and your rental growth is still going to kick on. So hang in there if you're there, but the the I'm I'm on Jared's. We've got to get the pipeline going because yeah. it's not going to fix itself over the next five years. We can't magic buildings out of the ground, but we need to start supply start, growth significant, and we've got to cut the barriers for those guys. Are we in, la- in the next are we allowed five- to mention developers' names? Danny, Danny Kiyama, calling Danny, build some apartments. Yeah. Build us some apartments. Yeah. He won't mind. No, he'll be okay. All right. I reckon that's a wrap. Thank you. See that's you. That's a wrap. Ciao. Thanks.